So with that, I'm going to start the recording. All right, everyone, welcome to Work Smart Lab. This is Everyday People Teams Training Part 2. Um, Rosa and I are super excited to be back this week. Um, we always really, we have, was actually Teams messaging Marissa earlier today and was like, I'm so excited because Teams is fun. We like talking about Teams. Uh, so we're excited to be back here this week to be talking about Teams sort of as your collaboration hub and all of the things that that means. So we have the fabulous Marissa Wayman back with us. She's WorkSmart's marketing manager. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Marissa is probably our resident like in-house super expert on teams. She knows all the things. She knows it backwards and forwards. She can do this in her sleep almost, uh, which she's not going to do today. But if you have uh, been watching us for a little while, you might notice that her background is a little bit different than normal. And that's because we're so excited. Everyone can just, you know, give her an air clap. Um, Marissa has recently moved um, to another state, actually. Um, and she's sort of in transition. So uh, you might see her dog jumping up at that door because she's very sad that Marissa's outside and she's inside alone. But Marissa's office isn't quite set up yet. So this is why she's outside. And we might have a little bit of um, cameo from her dogs here and there. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, so we're very excited for Marissa. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy transition to do this webinar. And while I'm at it, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and always a big thank you to the Durham Chamber of Commerce for working with us to make this available to the community because uh, we would love for this type of thing to uh, help other small businesses uh, function a little bit better, make their day easier and more productive. So with that, today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Teams for everyday people. This is part two. Uh, last week we went over video meetings and video calls and all of the cool like nitty gritty features of those things and how to get the best out of those tools uh, for your productive collaborative uh, meetings. So this week, we're gonna really be looking at Teams overall as your collaboration hub. Uh, in the email you probably saw from me yesterday, we've been talking about Teams in a couple of different ways almost all throughout this series, right? We talked about communicating in the cloud and when to use Teams and how to use Teams like for your communication strategy. We also talked about files, files everywhere and how Teams can really help you um, organize those files. Uh, and a few other like little drips and drabs here all over this series, right? And none of those really went deeply into Teams. So this week, that's what we're doing. So we're going to show you how all of these things that we've been talking about for the whole series long really comes together in this one window <laughs> and to rule them all. Uh, and that is your Microsoft uh, Teams desktop app. So with that, I'm going to pass this off to Marissa and she is going to take it away. She's going to talk a little bit and then we're going to go into a demo. Yes. And I'm very excited. I actually posted on LinkedIn yesterday that I love Teams. It's no secret, uh, but I love Teams because it really is just taking everything that we use regularly and giving it to us in one place so we can do things easier. And I like easy. So uh, the other reason why I love Teams so much is because we're not in the office anymore. Um, and now I'm uh, 500 plus miles away. But I still want to be able to connect with the team. I still need to be able to do my, uh, my job. I still need to be able to get in touch with Dawn. So um, we're just going to go through everything kind of from the beginning of how Teams is structured for how we work together. Um, and as Dawn said, we'll just kind of talk about some of the things that we've talked uh, over the weeks about uh, and we'll show you them in real time in that one place. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm actually going to start um, before we hop into the demo. What I want to do is give you a little bit of an overview. All right. Okay. 
um, give you an overview of how Teams is structured, because this is really important. All right, so you, if you've joined us before for our Teams webinars, Dawn had this genius moment about how we describe the structure of Teams, and we call it the three tiers of Teams. Uh, and as you can see on the window, there's Teams, Channels, and Tabs. So a team is really just an umbrella for like a pre-designated group of people. So, you know, in its simplest form, it is a group of people to bring together to get that, you know, they work closely together. They have to work together to get the work done. Uh, these can be um, private teams. So you have to invite someone to the team. It can be a public team where anyone from your company can uh, look up the team and then join and request themselves. Um, and then there's also the organization wide team, which is by default what gets programmed. So if you've never used Teams before and you open it for the first time, you will see a, um, for us, it's a work smart all team. Now the channel is actually the virtual workspace. So our team umbrella, we have a visual, but I'm gonna use my hands too. We have the team umbrella, those are the people. Then we have the channel, which is your space, your workspace. Um, and this is really, as, you know, as it says here, this is where the work gets done. Um, these channels are, they can be dedicated to specific um, projects, topics, departments. It's really just uh, another layer around the people who work together regularly. Conversations happen here, files get short, shared here, apps uh, get stored here. So this is, like we said, this is, this is where everything happens. Now the tabs are uh, part of the channel and they give you those tools right at your fingertips. So when I said conversations, when I said files, apps, all of those in a channel will take form as a tab. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you here and just actually, well, I'll show you here. So down here, you'll see this is a team. Uh, teams for webinars is the team we're looking at right now. And you can see underneath that is the general channel. Now, the reason why this is here is because every team you create will have a general cha channel. This is a really good place for um, like meta questions, um, FAQs, setting expectations for your, for your, uh, your team. Adding more channels is important uh, when you start to break up how people work together. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. These are those tabs I was talking about. So if you're looking in that left, uh, kind of the left navigation, you'll see the, the team and the channel. And then to the right is that main window. And if you joined us last week, you saw that when we were chatting um, in the kind of one-on-one -on -one chat or a group chat, you still have that very similar window. So everything in Teams is going to share that same experience. That's the benefit of using it. You get a consistent experience no matter how you work. Uh, but the channel is set up differently so that we can contain everything that the group needs to work on uh, together so that people can come and go, but the data and the tools do not. To break down the tabs a little bit more, this is kind of the um, the sweet spot for me. You know, Teams is great, but there are so many other things that we use to get our day done. Um, we, whether it's a Microsoft 365 app, um, you know, here you'll see uh, we've got our OneNote, um, the purple N, that's our OneNote. Yammer is over here. Uh, we've got Planner, that's this kind of pixelated P uh, for projects and task management. Forms is another Microsoft 365 application that allows you to create surveys and forms and collect feedback very quickly. Uh, this little triangle is Microsoft Stream, which is a video collaboration platform. Uh, and then, of course, our good old SharePoint. Uh, these other two uh, in kind of this red signature uh, icon, this is Adobe Sign. This is, we, we looped this in here to represent third party apps everywhere because we all know we don't just restrict ourselves to Microsoft 365, even though that would save us a bunch of money. 
we do need to do work in the best way for us. So that might mean um, a CRM system, um, Adobe Creative Suite, um, this little uh, pink uh, World Wide Web icon is actually Microsoft's way of showing you, you can just plug in a website. Uh, something as simple as um, if your app doesn't integrate inherently, you can just grab the URL and stick it in there and you'll link to a website. So the idea is that, you know, you want to think about the tools that you use, the tools, the files, the dashboard, everything your organization already uses. Many of that can be added right into Teams so that the, the apps let you do the work that you need to do. And when you work with different people, you're going to need different things. You'll need different information. You'll need different tools. Channels are most valuable when you break them into um, the, I guess when you chunk them up based on how the people work together so that you have the right apps, uh, so that you have the right data and that you have the right people. So that's where you will have, let's say one team and create multiple channels. Um, and I'll, I'll save to explain that more once I jump into teams because the visual will help. The goal with bringing in everything into the channel, um, the apps and the people, is so that you can empower yourself to do everything that you need to. And that, and I, I will say this a bunch of times throughout this webinar, but each channel should have its own experience. This, you know, when it comes to teams, I like to use this example because I'm in marketing, so it's easy for me. HR is an easy substitute as well. Uh, but you have all of these tools and you have teams that you can create and you have channels you can create. But not everybody needs access to everything, uh, nor should they have access to everything. Uh, and so when you're creating your teams, you want to think about people who work together. Uh, I recommend keeping teams, uh, instead of trying to get really granular, um, let's say create a marketing team and an HR team and a sales team, I would start with thinking about the way you work in creating the least amount of teams possible. Uh, have a larger set of members so that you can create and carve out those channels more specifically, because remember, the team is just the people who have access to the things inside your channel. Now, if you have something in your channel that you want to restrict people looking at, this would give you another reason to create, a, excuse me, it would give you a reason to create another team. So for example, we have Team Work Smart All. This is our default, everybody in the company. We do have a marketing channel because there is a lot of value in our team being able to see certain things. So when we talk about Work Smart All, Again, we're talking about a bunch of bodies. We have a marketing channel, or excuse me, a marketing team that has very few people. It's restricted to Don, myself, and Clay, because we're the marketing team. And it's done so, uh, so that only we have access to the information. And the idea is work smart all is open. Marketing team is closed. That's a big kind of differentiator there for when you're setting yourself up and you're starting to think about, okay, where do I want to store this piece of information? Is it, um, is it an HR document that has sensitive information and should only be seen by certain people? Is this, um, is this a collection of headshots uh, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't need to be in a easily accessible by everyone in the company that can fall under the WorkSmart team? Uh, so we've got in our marketing channel, uh, we'll do internal broadcasts for WorkSmart Live. So I can, Dawn and I can share what's coming up, ask folks to um, invite our clients. We have monthly newsletters. On the general channel in marketing, uh, this is the place where we're brainstorming. This is our ideation. This is our, um, our kind of our, uh, our battleground before things are perfected. So again, not necessarily private information because there's not a whole lot in our marketing team that we're going to need to hide from people. It's really about being open versus closed. 
I was going to say it was our like dance floor. Cause we're like, <laughs> not our battleground. <laughs> this is very true. It's true. <laughs> it is our dance floor. And what helps us on the dance floor is all of the music and the sweet moves that we have. And so I will liken that to the tabs. Uh, so in the marketing dance floor or the marketing uh, team and channels, we're probably going to need access to um, things like the master files. Uh, so we've got folders for archived drafts, final versions, and then we've got things split out to different file formats. Uh, but on the marketing side for the entire company, we don't need all of that. In fact, I don't want to share all of our design files because what happens if somebody uh, edits a design file and we, uh, we can't get it back? Um, good reason to have a backup. We'll talk more about that as well. So again, it's really about the way you work uh, and the creating the teams is the first place to start so that you can build out how people work together. And then the channels give you the more specific workspace and the tabs give you those tools. So we're talking about your people, your resources, your work, all organized in the right way for you. Any questions so far? I'm gonna take a, just a, a break, get some water. Uh, we don't have any questions in the feed right now, but you all are absolutely welcome to send them in. While you're drinking some water, um, I'll just reiterate kind of what Marissa said about the three tiers for teams. One thing it, it, to say it very simply, the team is sort of like the, um, is on, when we get into teams, you're gonna see this here in a second, but it's just a name. There's nothing that happens on a team itself at all. It's just a name and you designate in the background who is involved in that particular that name, that umbrella. Then within that, you always have that general channel and then you can create as many other channels as you want. And everybody who's in the team has access to everything that's underneath of the umbrella in all of the different channels. Your channel is your like sandbox of your workplace. You can design it to look uh, and function in the way that you function as a team. And even if you are like, not a department head, you're not an administrator, that's okay. All of this stuff is really valuable for you too because you should be able to add channels for projects that you might be working on later on. And it would also help you understand where to go and find the information that you need and when to use what channel and what team and how all this stuff works together. So um, as this particular slide so shows you, you might have topics that are the exact same on two different channels because you want that sandbox to look differently for different people. So on this like company all one for marketing or HR is always a really good example. You might have your final files that everybody needs to see. You might have like internal broadcasts and updates, but that's probably not where you are going to do all of your work, right? This is more of an information sharing element. You need a channel for your work to happen. And that's where all of your editing files. And again, if you're not an administrator, you can, you can add those files yourself. So if you know that everybody needs to work on this document together for a little while, you can add that as a tab. And this should be where all of your team files are and all the things. Um, were you gonna talk about stream or anything else? I think there's a couple of things I'm left on this. Uh, I actually missed the animation on it, so I just hit it while you were talking. <laughs> um, so, stream is something we're gonna we're gonna touch on when you record meetings. Uh, if you joined us last week, you'll remember us talking about this. But if you record meetings, uh, if you have a meeting in a channel, you are able to store those meeting recordings right in that channel. And if it's a recurring meeting, it kind of stacks together. So that would be a really good reason, you know, if you have a meeting, uh, we have a sales and marketing, L, uh, we call it an L10 every week, a level 10 discussions. Um, and we pick up on those conversations from week to week. So having a collation of our recordings and our meeting notes is extremely important. Again, probably not important to the rest of the company, but being able to embed 
webinar recording. So after today, we'll be able to take this recording, we'll be able to put it into that general, or excuse me, the Work Smart All marketing group so that everybody can see that because those are, those are recordings that people are gonna wanna touch versus the meeting recordings, which are only accessible to the team there. And to make that all make more sense, I'm just going to show you, oh, well, before, one more animation. Uh, so again, when you're talking about that information versus collaboration, um, it's really important to think about those tools. When you're sharing information, so if you have a works model marketing team and the, the purpose is only to share the information that's going on, maybe there'll be some conversations where people reply back and forth, but the work isn't as necessary there. So in that marketing private team, in the, let's say the general channel, because that's the one we're talking about here, we might need our planner uh, to be able to have a collection of our tasks right at our fingertips. Uh, we might need OneNote because that's where we brainstorm all of the events upcoming for this series and dump all of the things that we may want to talk about. Once that stuff is all nice and beautiful, all that stuff comes together in that channel, the final product are those files and the webinar recordings, which is why we're posting it there for the entire team to consume in their um, final format, if you will. Yeah, and if you notice, our planner is not on a company or all channel because we don't really want everybody adding tasks to our to-do list all the time, right? We want so to keep true. track of our own work. I mean, they might anyway, <laughs> but uh, but we we keep that stuff there because it's not something that everybody else needs to be a part of. So that we we won't even have these types of tabs on our company all channel. Very, very true. All right. So the moment we've all been waiting for is not my face. It is Teams. So let me change my screen and get you all into my line of sight. All right. Here we go. All right. So this is my Teams. Uh, we have been in it before. Welcome back. The, just real quickly, what you're looking at here on the left side, this is, I'm in this, uh, the team spot here. I'll touch on these here at the end, just to kind of as a reminder, but today we're going to focus all about the team's icon. Here on this left side underneath teams, you'll see I have my pinned teams. But these are all of the teams inside of WorkSmart that I can see. Uh, as you'll see down here, you can join or create a team depending on the permissions that you have. If the team, remember when I said public, private, or organization-wide teams, you can see here that there are some that I can see that are, um, that are already public. I can go ahead and search. Uh, and that's what the difference between public, private, this works more all, this is actually our um, kind of organization wide channel. For the purpose of, uh, of these webinars, we've been using the Teams for Webinars channel. So you'll see that we've got, if I come over here to the, the little triangle, I can expand to see all of the teams in every single one of these units. Uh, so all of the teams for the channels underneath. So again, if you click on the team, you're not going to go anywhere. Like Dawn said, this is just the collection of people. So these more, uh, the more action or the more options ellipses, if you click those, you'll see if there's a team here that you're not as worried about, you can hide it. Um, you can go in and manage the team depending on your permissions. If you need to add a channel, add a member, leave the team. Uh, something that's really important uh, is also managing tags. When you talk about creating groups of people uh, and working around, when you want to call out someone specific, it may not make sense to tag all of them. So let's say you need to reach out to um, anyone in the company, uh, uh, anyone in this particular channel with a certain title. Uh, instead of um, typing in everybody's name, you can create a tag 
Um, you'll see here, I created the Work Smart Live tag. This is something, this is our baby, Dawn and I. And so when we're working on something and I just want to tag the two of us as part of it, we now have a tag that allows us to do that. Uh, and you'll see here, it's the at mention we've talked about before. If you're anywhere in Teams and you hit the at sign and then you start typing a user's name, it'll pop up and it'll notify them that they have been tagged in a message. So these tags are just creating groups of people that you can at mention to tag. They will be notified as well. So if you want to create one, it's just very simple to go into managing tags and you create a tag and you type in your name. You add, as soon as you start typing in people, they come up. So again, it's based on the way that you work. One of the other things um, that I think is helpful when you think about um, how you work is uh, that being able to favorite things. Uh, so if you'll see up here, I have things that are pinned. And if I were to go to unpin, then it would just simply remove it from my view. It's still underneath my teams, but it's not here in my favorites. I myself like to look at my screen with the least amount of information as possible. So I will work out of these with my teams closed, but at any point, if I wanna know what's going on, I can actually open it and you'll see WorkSmart Alt is bold. The reason why is because there is activity there that is basically letting me know. So if I go down, okay, there's new activity here. I can click in there and get the information that I need. Uh, underneath, when we talked about the channels, we still have those more options. We can pin those channels like I've mentioned. Uh, you can set up your channel notifications. Uh, so if you want to be notified of everything, you can go in here, click. The custom will give you options to kind of decide how you want to see the feeds, whether it's new posts or channel mentions. I personally want to be notified as many times as possible for things that mention me uh, so that I increase my odds of answering. Uh, so that's why I have this set for myself this way. Now, somebody who's part of a bunch of teams may decide they want to handle their notifications differently. So that's all set up by the individual user. And something else, Don, you said earlier, I want to hit back on, um, you know, we're talking about the structure. We talk about adding team members or creating channels. If you're not your um, your company's uh, business technology decision maker, you may feel like this is not pertinent to you. Those pieces are not. But I encourage you to pay attention because the idea of teams is that you don't just have a top down administration. So again, it's based on the way you work. So it may make sense for team members who are not your typical technology owners to have the permissions to be able to add channels. Uh, for example, Dawn and I might need to create a channel every event so that we can wrap all of our stuff, our artwork, our outlines, our scripts, uh, what I'm gonna wear that day. I'm just kidding, it's really easy. It's a Zoom shirt and self pants. I mean, but, she's, she's lying. She, she sent me a picture of her outfit every, every day. <laughs> so we can coordinate. There's a channel just for that. Yep. Uh, but that is, that functionality of being able to create channels is, uh, is great. We just have to make sure that we're doing it in a responsible way and that we're also maintaining the channel. So if you're creating a project, you know, around, if you're creating a channel around projects uh, that are not indefinite, um, then, you know, we always, we always encourage the third party backup. Uh, Microsoft does not back up inherently. It requires a third party backup to have a true um, recoverable solution in the event that data is accidentally or maliciously deleted. Um, so having, um, being able to archive the information and then be able to go back to it, um, these are all decisions that you have to make uh, as part of your collaboration work plan. So thinking back to communication in the cloud, making sure you communicate clearly to everybody how you're going to maintain teams ongoing. Otherwise, you're going to end up with hundreds of channels and it's going to be just as dirty as your email. Speaking of, be, of being uh, getting dirty or lost inside of here, when you're in a channel, that's this panel here, if you go over to this little information icon, you can get a really quick look at uh, what is going on in the channel, who are the members of the team, 
uh, you'll see that it only shows a couple of things and then you go to your full list and it'll actually take you to the team information. So it shows you, okay, Don and I are owners. We don't have any guests. We just like to be the two of us on this channel, in this team. If we were to, you know, invite someone and it hasn't uh, been required, it hasn't been solidified yet, it would show up here. A master list of all of the channels. Uh, your settings are in here. You can add pictures, you can change your permissions. Um, and then the apps button, this is our first window into the apps. This here shows you all of the apps that are installed across your channels in this team. This is also where you can add more apps. So if you, um, for example, we use a third party app uh, called Tiny Pulse for uh, recognition and um, uh, employee, um, I'm trying, I want to say it, advocacy, but that's not the right word. Um, a virtual suggestion box. I think thank you. I yes. Yes. Perfect. We, if you, we want to bring that into Teams because we don't want to get the information and have to go somewhere else to get it. So I click on the more apps and I search in the apps. I can see if there's an app that just integrates and sure enough, Tiny Pulse has an app. If I were to just click on this, it would give me the opportunity to add it to the team. I'm going to go ahead and add it so you guys can see what that looks like. And it's telling me that it wants to add to the general webinars channel, which is exactly where I was and I wanted to go there. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit setup. We'll let it run in the background for a second. Well, that second was really quick today. So here it is letting us know that we're going to build a better culture right here in the channel. This added here because I added the, oh, wait, maybe. Well, it didn't add as a tab, it added right into here. Um, but if it did add an app as a tab, I would be able to see it in up here. These are your tabs that we talked about. But when you're, if you see here, when I scroll up, you see all of this, okay, we added a new tab here. We added a new tab here. Oh, okay, and there's an invoice we need to take a look at here. All of this is activity across the channel, whether it's in the posts, the actual post channel, or if it's something that happened over here to the other tabs. It all collates right here in the posts to keep you abreast of what's going on. So that's the really key, again, the key piece about a channel is being able to wrap everything together and to be able to quickly see what's going on. While we're in the uh, posts tab, I want to give you um, a little bit of a tour. This is very straightforward editor down here. Um, this bar is going to be your friend. We've got your um, uh, conversation rich text. You can go in and add a subject line. I highly recommend adding a subject line. Uh, it's extremely important to be able to see what's going on very easily. Also, if you don't want to just have a conversation, you just want to share information, you want to call attention to it, there is an announcement section, which actually gives you a colored headline. You can add an image here, or you can just change the color. And then that way, when you create something, you're actually given a visual, oh, let's Marissa, I think you muted yourself. Oh, there you are. I had a trouble typing your name a second. So you'll see the difference between a post if I were to just do a new conversation. This is what it would look like, the difference between an actual announcement versus just a thread conversation. The functionality is still the same when you're replying. It's just a little different when it comes to uh, the way it's formatted. I would recommend that you selectively use this announcement, but because it does add that formatting, it makes it a larger thread. Just be cautious that it then makes you have to scroll through a lot of things to get there. So, uh, but still a really helpful feature to have. 
The other thing down here that's helpful to pull out, these are all of the default apps that are down here. Um, so you're gonna have your attach where you can attach documents, links, um, you know, your emojis. My favorite section of Teams is your gifts so that you can stay um, friendly and uh, visual and fun. Uh, this is your stream. Uh, this is so that if you have a video link from stream that you want to embed in here, let's say a recording for Work Smart Live, um, you would go ahead and post it in here and it would just populate in the message. Remember when we were talking about the app mentions, uh, if I hit the at symbol, it's just going to go ahead and um, give me a suggestion. Obviously, I use Dawn a lot, but if I wanted to use that tag that I had mentioned earlier, I can start typing and it's going to give me some suggestions. The other thing you can do is you can at mention a team or a channel. So if I wanted to at mention um, the management team or our social channel, you can do that. I always encourage you to think about how you're notifying people because obviously you want to notify the right people. You don't want to just broadcast to everyone all the time. So be careful of that. I will also warn you of a mistake I made recently, which is right here in this post in multiple channels. If you do this, it will ask you, okay, which channels do you want to? And you'll select the channels. If you uh, do that, it will post the same message in every channel. If you tag someone in that, it will tag them in every single channel. So if you broadcast to 20 channels and you broadcast it uh, and you hit at mention the entire WorkSmart team, then the entire WorkSmart team gets notified for every single channel. Don't do it. Be intentional. You can also control who can reply. So if this is truly an announcement and you just don't want anyone to respond to it, you can control that. Very helpful features here. The other thing I wanna point out is again, this more options. Uh, if you wanna use an app, you can do this really easily just by going in here. You don't have to go back to the information section and go into an app. You can just kind of go into here and say, I'm gonna find an app, uh, let's see. We're gonna get more apps. Oh, and it took me away. I'm just gonna pick on an app. Let's just say forms. And when I open forms, it'll basically give me the option, just like we saw before. Where where do I want to add this? This is the forms functionality in Microsoft 365. Literally lets you embed a poll into straight from that app pretty cool. Again, this is that integration of the Microsoft 365 apps and third party apps to help you get the work you need done. So for me, I do a lot of uh, collecting of information. Another thing that I do a lot of uh, Monday.com Don and I use for tracking events and our content calendar. So being able to go into there and grab items from there to share is extremely helpful. There's also a YouTube button by default if you want to share some YouTube content. Um, you can give praise to someone. Uh, and you, we all sh we, sh we, sh we saw the stream earlier. Um, I'm going to scroll up. And for those of you that didn't join us last week, I just real quickly want to show you what it looks like if you have a if you schedule a meeting in a channel, you are able to open that meeting to anyone in that team. If you want to invite them to that meeting, you are gonna need to ask them, uh, you are gonna need to enter their name as a, uh, as a um, attendee, a required attendee to that event, and it'll show up on their calendar. But you'll see here that it just shows up. When it's live, you'll see a join button here, and that means anyone who has access to this channel will be able to join that meeting if they so choose. Then all of the meeting notes are gonna, from any meeting stored on this channel, are gonna be created here in this tab. This is a collation of all of the notes. So if I hit here, it, it's a very similar uh, format to OneNote, but it actually uses the wiki backend. 
So this is one meeting with notes. Okay, cool. I get to see that. All right, now I want to see what happened on this meeting. Okay, these are all the notes. And then as we continue to add notes from these meetings, they'll continue to add here. You can do it before the meeting, during the meeting, after the meeting, but it all stores in this central place. Let's see, do I have any videos? Let's see. So we, you know, we have all of our meetings. Okay. Oh, look, we've got some giffies. All right. This is a good thread to share with you guys. So we scheduled a meeting. We created some meeting notes. Those are here. So if you're in the thread and you want to click through the meeting notes, just another way to get to where you were. Uh, you can see how long the meeting lasted. Dawn had was talking to me during the meeting. This is actually the chat thread from our meeting. Um, so this is stored here. The next time we join a meeting, it'll still be there. We can pick up. Um, and then of course, some giffies to make it fun. Um, let's see, where is our... I think it's a little bit higher up. Is it up a little the recording there? There we go. For. There you go. <laughs> right. I was almost there, right at the top. Yeah, it's so close. <laughs> so we had this let's do this meeting. When we got done with the meeting, our 22 second meeting, uh, it was recorded. So when we got done with it, uh, it embedded right here. So when I scroll through and say, okay, Don and I met, oh, here is the meeting recording. I'm gonna go ahead and watch it. Again, this is accessible to anybody on the team. So think, do I want someone to, you know, is this a management meeting? Should this be accessible to anyone? If the answer is it should be only accessible to certain people, you need to be thoughtful about the team. All right, so we talked about posts. This is a default tab. Files is also another default tab. Now, files in Microsoft 365 can mean several things. It could be a OneDrive or it could be a SharePoint. If you joined us for files, files everywhere, you'll remember that Teams actually pulls in OneDrive and SharePoint for two different things. When you're working in a team in a channel, all of the files that get uploaded or shared in a channel get stored in this files tab, which utilizes SharePoint. So SharePoint essentially creates this place for you to have all of these files back and forth. You never have to leave Teams, so you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily know you're using SharePoint, but you are. You can do whatever you need to do here. You can add folders, documents, um, brand new. You can upload things that you have. The sync button here is to be able to sync this to your desktop so that you don't actually have to be in Teams uh, if you wanna be able to access your files, especially for things like offline um, file editing, the copy link is just to, uh, exactly that, is to copy a link to um, the folder or the file in question. You can download it. Uh, but if you at any point decide that you want to uh, leave the Teams interface, you can do so very easily just by opening it in SharePoint. A really important thing to note though when you're using files, so let's say we go back to our post section and I wanna share a file with Dawn. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload a file. I go to my wilds, let's just see what my recent files look like. All right, that's perfect, how topical. I'm gonna upload a copy of Teams for everyday people. And when it's done uploading, when it does upload, it will be available here as part of the conversation, but it will also be part of files. It will drop right here into the files. It will not be organized, it will just dump. If you want it to be organized, which I highly recommend creating file structures that make sense for your um, channel, for your group of people working on a specific topic or project or department, um, create that file, that file structure just like you would on an internal file server um, so that you have a, a nice organization that you can easily maintain. And then go into the folder of desire, upload the file there, 
so that it's organized correctly and then link to it in the post section. All right, we're going to do this the opposite way since that didn't want to uh, didn't want to work. So upload files. We're just going to grab we're going to grab our communicating the cloud map. All right, so I uploaded this right here uh, into the general section. Now, if I want to move this, I can simply just hit uh, the, the little space off to the left, select it, and then what I'll do from here is I will actually move it, and I can move it, and here it'll show me my channels. Okay, so here's my channel, my general channel that I've been working in for Teams for Webinars. Here's my email messages folder. If I had another folder, I could add it here, um, but I can just easily go ahead and move it here. It's really important that you move files that way in Teams so that you're preserving the version history. If you move it another way, let's say download it and upload it somewhere else, you lose the connection of that file. Because remember, we're communicating in the cloud. All of this is being stored uh, on the Microsoft infrastructure, and we, we're using the internet to do all of this. So when you break that link, you're breaking um, the, the history of it all. I'm gonna go back in and show, let's see if, uh, since that one, that one worked really quickly, let me see if I could do that one more time just to show you that it does uh, just kind of dump there. While I'm doing that, Dawn, are there any questions? Um, when you have time, and I think you're going to get to this, okay. but the little plus symbol up in the right hand corner, yes. um, if you can show what that does, that'd be great. Absolutely. So let me try to attach this demo outline. Oh, you're almost there. Ta-da! All right. So I just uploaded um, a document here into the general. Everyone can access it. Now, when I go into files, I see it here. Now, again, if I wanted to, if I can move it, after a while, if you share a bunch of files, it starts to look like, let's see, this one's actually organized well. So there's only two files outside of the norm. But in some channels, if you don't pay attention, this is going to grow into a laundry list it's very difficult to maintain, as, uh, whether it's permissions, uh, it's the version history, it's very difficult to maintain. So just keep an eye on that. I think a good thing to note here is, um, it might not be super obvious since you're not familiar with our like Teams tenant, but that, um, that channel that Marissa was just on was our marketing channel within our company all team. So we don't actually want a lot of folders in there because we want to keep that information, again, just to published like final versions of documents. If you went into our actual marketing team general channel and looked at files there, uh, that is quite, quite different. Um, we have a lot of different folders here that Marissa and I need. Um, and we don't want everybody else to have all of that access because again, like Marissa mentioned, um, it's pretty easy to accidentally change some stuff in a file and then uh, then we're in trouble. Um, except that we have a backup, so we wouldn't be in trouble. Um, if you went into our social circuit channel, which is just a lot, it's, it's our way of virtually like keeping connected with each other. It's underneath of our company all channel. Um, that file structure is not organized at all. So it's actually a really good um, uh, example of um, what it kind of looks like um, when you just dump a lot of files in there because it's not, it's not organized. So we share a lot of pictures of um, kids and our dogs. I don't have a dog. I have cats. So cat pictures, but there's a lot of stuff like that. So um, as you're adding files, again, it doesn't get organized. So that's a good thing, really, really good thing to remember that you do need to go back and reorganize that later. 
Absolutely. And if you do it intentionally and drop those files into the folders and then share from there, then you don't need to worry about kind of post cleanup. Uh, and just in the moment, just to kind of show you guys, um, if I click on here and I go into that communicating in the cloud, um, the, the file, if I copy the link from here, this will just take me, you get two options. You get the Microsoft Teams and you get the SharePoint link. If you just want to keep people in Teams, you just grab this link. If you want to send them to SharePoint, you could grab this link. I'm going to grab the Microsoft Teams link. And now I'm going to go back into the thread and I'm going to say, hey, Don, I've got this file for you. And then if I put in the link, it's really messy. I copy that and I go into the rich text editor, excuse me, highlighted. I'm not copying anything. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to make it into a pretty hyperlink. I'm going to type text to display should be insert. Now it's a pretty link. I'm going to send it over to Don. And if I click here, it's actually just going to take me to the document link inside of Teams. So just like that, you can still have access to the file without you're sharing the file, but you placed it in the correct place so that everybody's working from the same one. Now, if I were to share something from my OneDrive as I did here, this is gonna live in essentially two places. Oh, Don, you're the best. But if I have, uh, you know, this is from my OneDrive, um, so I uploaded it from my OneDrive into here. And so now this version is going to live in Teams under the files. Another cool thing that you can do is um, you can make a single file or a folder, a tab. So I'm going to take you back to the marketing channel because I think this is a good one to show, uh, the private marketing channel. Uh, here at, uh, at the top up here, you can see um, I have a folder called Headshots, and that is really easy for Dawn, myself, or Clay, whenever we need a headshot, to just pop into here uh, and find all of the headshots that we need. So this is a tab that I created based on files that were already in Teams. And let me show you that real quick. What I mean by that is I've got a file in here. Let's use the demo outline. And what I want to do is I want to make this a tab. So all I did was I clicked back on that option on the left. I hit the more options ellipses. I went down to make this a tab and ta-da! It now is a tab at the top. So now when I scroll through, you're going to see it automatically right here. I, you will never have to leave Teams to work on it. You can open it. You can edit it right here because this was a Word document. And you can have conversation, make comments. You can also open it in the browser from here. So let's say you just don't want to use Teams to do it. No big deal. You can do that. You can also open it in the desktop app. So for anyone who's used Microsoft 365 web apps, you'll know that those web apps don't have the full functionality that they do as a desktop app. So if you decide, okay, I'm doing something and now I, I'm stopped, I can't continue to format, I need it to be opened on my desktop, you can just hit this button and it'll pop out. Very easy. All right. But in order to do that, you will have to upload the file into your channel and then do it from here. Uh, the wiki is another one of these um, default tabs. Uh, the wiki is really helpful on the general channel as a way to set FAQs or expectations. Um, so you'll see here, I just kind of created a default. This is what this channel, uh, this is what this team is designed for. Here's how I want you to use this, create the channels for specific events. You joined us for files, files everywhere. We, um, we talked about best practices for keeping your files, you know, your virtual files virtually organized. And one of the big things is to set clear expectations on how you want your folks to use tools. What's better than to share with your team how to use your tool than by giving them the instructions right here on the tool. We also um, 
skip over the meeting notes because we already talked about that. That got added here because uh, we had um, scheduled meetings and held meetings in the channel. This is just inherently gets added there for that reason. Now this plus sign is actually how you add a tab. So if you want to, um, you know, the first, these three are ones that get created automatically. And let's say you want to add another app. You would go in here and you would, this is a familiar screen again. This is basically the app screen. And let's say you want to pull up, again, this is that website icon we talked about earlier. If you want to, let's say, I want to add the events center to our channel because we work a lot in our events. I know it's not. Let's see if that'll work. There we go. Add this website. Now it popped up at the top and I can see our beautiful website. The event center is just right here at my fingertips. I don't have to scroll to the website if I want to grab some information, whether it's the registration link or I just want to read the copy to refresh myself. Um, the other thing you can do is you can rename it. So I've added a website up here. Let's say I add another website. I don't want a bunch of tabs called website. So I can rename it and just say the event center is here. Ta-da! I did this with videos. This is actually the Microsoft Stream app added as a tab because we do a lot of webinars. We have a services education um, channel in Microsoft Stream. And so in order to just give our um, team all of these resources right at the um, right at their fingertips, we just created a, um, a tab that they could come in here and say, oh, okay, well, here's, here's the Teams for Everyday People Part 1. Better watch that before my clients ask me questions after Part 2. I renamed this because I find videos to be a little bit more explanatory than just stream. But you could rename this to be webinars, trainings, um, Marissa's face, if it's just a bunch of videos of Marissa's face. Uh, let's see, I created this other channel down here and I'm gonna show you, uh, essentially, it looks different. We have different files. Here, we've added a, um, tab for keeping track of to-dos. And this is actually using Planner. Uh, so in here, if you're not familiar with Flan uh, Planner, if you're not familiar with Planner, it is a uh, Kanban style card um, task management solution. Um, it helps if you're doing small projects, um, kind of day-to-day uh, -day projects. If you're doing massive project work, um, Microsoft Project or uh, Microsoft Project Online are going to be uh, more suited for those. This is really to kind of help people with their everyday um, work. And so this is a channel around our Teams Part 2 event. Um, and so, you know, our to-dos would be specific to this event. This is a planner board specific to our event. So if I wanted to add to-dos, I can go in here um, and I can say, all right, I want Dawn to post the recording to stream. Well, actually, I'm just gonna have her post the recording. If I click into that card, it'll actually give me, I can assign it to Dawn. I'm never actually, she's on the call, but I'm not, talking to her to tell her this. I'm just going to go ahead and assign her to do. I'm going to tell her that I would like it to be due by tomorrow because I'm sure the people who registered for this event would love to have the recording tomorrow. So we need to share the recording with attendees. This is my checklist of to-do items and I also need her to share on stream with our internal team. I can add an attachment. So if I have the outline that I want her want to go along with that, or perhaps I want to share the registration page, I can do that right here as an attachment. And I can also type in comments. So it'll keep track of a thread of comments. But now we've got another to do. Uh, when I start marking to do's is completed, it'll actually show me down here. It's a really cool um, functionality 
built into your Microsoft 365 subscription. So I highly recommend if you're not using Planner, take a look at it um, to see where it might fit in with organizing um, the work that you and your team do. Again, you can rename this. Um, you, it defaults to the name Planner. So you can have several different Planner boards in one channel if necessary. Also, these names of the buckets, um, these vertical uh, columns are your buckets. Um, and so if I needed, so this is kind of a, a long-term project versus a to-do, if I wanted to do, you can kind of move back and forth between these things, but you can continue to add buckets as you need more. Lots of really cool stuff in here. And now yeah. if you want to, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say on my end, because Marissa just assigned me that task, it actually shows up in my activity feed. I just got a little notification at my end that says Marissa add, assigned me this task. So that bell icon with the little red um, two on Marissa's thing, that's your activity feed. That's where all of your notifications get dumped. And I just had one drop in mine that says Marissa assigned me this thing that I need to do tomorrow from planner and it will take me directly to the task it's that ecosystem that kind of shares everything across the board um, again that was that's our purpose our purpose is to take us out of um, email uh, and our drowning inbox and to really uh, also limit the number of meetings we're in um, you don't want to respond to getting work done by just throwing more meetings at it so Based, you know, now that we're you we're getting used to working remotely, uh, we're looking for ways to get more done uh, so that we can have that strong work-life balance. Tools like this are designed purposely for that. Uh, so setting up the right notifications for you, setting up those teams properly are going to be allow you to hone in on what's important for you. Otherwise, you're just going to drown in notifications and all that jazz. Another app that's coming, it's being released as we speak, it's called Microsoft Lists. Um, that is something that is being added. It's very similar to this, except um, actually, I think I have one here. It is available in our Microsoft tenant right now. Um, so I imagine it's rolling out to our clients as well. But if you see here, it's very similar to like a uh, Asana or a Monday.com where you can create a list of items. This is our kind of a, a content calendar for the event. You can see that this is the artwork tile. Um, these are the things that we need to get done for it. Um, we can have a conversation right here regarding this specific thing if Dawn and I need to talk about it. We're wrapping a relevant conversation around an actual piece, uh, a tool or piece of data. Teams does a really good job of that. I showed you something similar when you had the, the Word document uploaded into Teams. You're able to do something very similar. Again, you can come in here. All channels allow you to add, you have document libraries, single documents, um, uh, third-party apps like Monday.com we use. Um, so that's helpful um, just to kind of give you an idea what that looks like. So. If I go into here and I go into my content calendar, we can actually see this is the monday.com app that I normally work in a browser on. It's now embedded in Teams, so I never have to leave. I can just come in here and I can work in monday.com just like I was working anywhere else. Pretty cool. Now, if I ever wanted to just go to the website, what I can do is up here, go to the World Wide Web icon, and I can click to, on it, and it'll actually take me there. I'm not sharing my whole screen, so you didn't see that it took me there, but I promise it did. Any questions so far? Or about anything that I've talked about? Or anything upcoming? <laughs> um, we don't have questions in the queue right now, but you're absolutely welcome to send them in. We will. Again, you saw down here, um, this came up when we were creating that tab. It went ahead and populated here. So it's just kind of keeping that, tr that thread of information. I chose to post it here. Um, if you 
when you created, um, I didn't go through that slowly, but when you created it, you'll see that post to the channel about this tab. Uh, you can uncheck that if you don't want to bother the team with it. Um, but if you do want people to know that it's there, it's a great way to just be able to go in and then people can reply to it. And I can say, why in the world did I add this? And then I can respond and say why I added it. Marissa, um, I noticed you did a typo there. Is there a way to go back and change oh. your post after you've sent it in? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I never spelled incorrectly. If I go to this post uh, and I hit the more, I can react to it and I can be very mad about the misspelling, but instead I'm gonna go over to the more options and because I'm the author of it, I will have the option to edit it. And when I do, it'll bring me here. If I wanna open up the rich, uh, the format or the rich text editor, I can and I can continue to edit it this way. I will say that if you are working in uh, editing some text, if you just do it like uh, in the bar without uh, hitting the format, if you hit enter, it sends it. But if you, I go back into editing it, if you hit the format, enter actually breaks the paragraph. It gives you those line breaks that you need. So if you wanna be able to format something with bullets and make it really pretty and organized, uh, you can do so um, just like you would if you were creating something in Word or any other Microsoft 365. Also, while we were in here, another really important thing uh, is the save this message. A lot of times we're working on things and there's something that grabs our attention, but we don't need to work on it right then and there. There's two options I want to share about this. Save this message is essentially bookmarking it. So when I bookmark it, if I want to go back to it, up here at the top, if I just hit whack, saved, it actually shows me all of the saved threads so I can go back and look at it. It's a really neat feature. The other thing that's really helpful was something a recent discovery of my, for myself was this option to send a conversation to Outlook. So not everybody works the same way. Some people love to work in nothing but Teams, but some people prefer to get an email that they can use um, as a to-do or as to trigger an action later down the line. So sharing to Outlook is great because when you hit that, it takes that entire thread, not the whole posts uh, tab, but that one particular thread you were on, and it will actually share it via email. And, the per and in the email, they're able to respond right there, or they can go use this link to go to Teams. It's really cool feature because you can select if you want to send it to a couple of people or a whole group of people. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to preserve the look and the feel of the conversation and get it to people in a way that is meaningful for them. Um, let's see, I think that's it that I wanted to share on the posts. Uh, files, we talked about adding tabs. We talked about tags. Right, so we do have a couple of questions. Perfect. <laughs> um, so uh, can you explain the search functionality across tabs and teams? Is the search functionality very robust? It sure is. So when you're searching, as you see here, once I click into that search box, it says, look for messages, files, and more. So if you just start typing for something, so let's say I want to talk about uh, any posts that mention WorkSmart Live, then I can start typing. It'll start showing me uh, different options. But if I hit enter uh, in that um, it's to the left uh, of the main window, you'll have the option to search through messages, people, files, so that you can filter down to where you're looking. So if I know what I'm looking for is a file, it gives me the option to look there. Um, if I'm looking for a person specifically, not just a, a mention of a person inside, you can do that. There's also ways to so, uh, you know, search a specific date range, um, or if you want to make sure that you were tagged inside of it, 
It's a really cool way to do that. The other thing that this search bar does um, is that whack command. So if you hit the, um, the slash and you, you'll see here, you can see your activity, um, you can go to your recent files. So the search is actually has more than just typing um, and looking for content related, but it also gives you a really easy way to just, if I want to send a new message. No, well, let's see. If I want to. It's chat. Thank you. That's the shorthand. <laughs> Thank you. If I hit chat, now it's going to let me pull up the person I want to chat. And it's going to let me say everything was sent right in that and I never had to leave where it was. And then if I want to see it in the chat, I can actually hit enter and it'll take me to the chat. Just like that. All right. But the search, that search function is cool because it does help you find people. It does search the messages and it does search the files. And if you noticed when I was playing around in the files, it does offer you the option to add cloud storage. So for example, in marketing, a lot of people use Macs and Google. So one of our marketing partners uses strictly Google. So I have some files that are in Google and it would be great if I could add them into Teams because that's where I'm all, at all the time. So I can actually go into the add cloud storage and I can add these and that brings it into the team, which means it brings it into that search interface. So Microsoft is putting a lot of effort into making this robust and that does include that search function. So while we're on the note of files, there was a question about files um, and it was, are there any limits we need to be aware of when using SharePoint for file storage? The file storage limit is, I want to say, I'm not going to say it because I know I'll jinx myself. SharePoint file size limit is 15 gigs per file. So there's you really did. no limitations other than that. Yeah. I, I, I remember that being like a fun fact in our files, files everywhere one. And I'm impressed at your ability to recall that so quickly. I was like, I don't, yes, no, <laughs> it's 15 gigs. Mm -hmm. And that is an actual, the reason why we brought it up under files, files everywhere is because it wasn't always 15 gigs. It was actually much smaller than that. Uh, but as, um, especially as the need for collaboration for a distributive workforce with, uh, with the pandemic has uh, made us all more reliant on communicating in the cloud, Microsoft has actually made a lot of uh, quick adjustments and that was one of them. Uh, so that design firms who, you know, AutoCAD drawings that are really easily several gigs, um, now you can add those there. Same thing with our headshots. Our headshot files, um, the raw images tend to be larger files. Uh, now we can share those easily without having to worry about it. And OneDrive is the same. Mm -hmm. Can you um, also highlight the uh, meeting icon up in the right-hand corner? Absolutely. There's actually two places I'll, I'll share. Um, up here, this is that meet icon. Uh, I highly encourage you to check out our every um, Teams for Everyday People part one. Uh, we did go into this in a lot more detail, learned a lot of really cool things. But up here, you can meet now in the channel um, or you can schedule a meeting. So if you are working on a project and you decide, all right, I need to just, I need to grab everyone together. And we need to just run through the status of this right now before I hop on a call. Instead of creating a chat or getting everyone together and picking up the phone, what you can do is just go into meet now and it'll start your meeting. You can name it uh, and then it will essentially let everyone know in the channel that there is a meeting going on and they can join it right from there. The schedule a meeting option is uh, exactly as it sounds. It gives you something similar to what you would see in Outlook to create the appointment. 
uh, it can recur. Uh, this is what I mentioned earlier about it being attached to a channel because we created it from within a channel. This is already pre-populated. If we were just doing this from, let's say, the calendar feature over here or from just a, a blank meeting, you could add channels in here. As you see, you can scroll down and select different channels so that you're um, going in the right place. Um, this channel doesn't mean that it will add to everyone's calendar. They'll see it in Teams and they can join it, but they won't actually have it on their calendar unless they add it. Here, the required attendees is where you would add uh, the people's names so that it shows up on their calendar. They can still join from within uh, with inside of Teams, but it does put it on their Outlook calendar. The awesome. other place for um, meetings is down here in the um, in the app bar. Uh, if you go into, where are you? Where are you me now? I'm missing my little, here we go. Let's see where my meeting is. Well, maybe, I think I know what I'm thinking of. If I go into the chat, that's where I can schedule a meeting is down here. You cannot do that in a channel. Correction. I will only show you one place in a channel to create a meeting. <laughs> um, but that is probably a good um, transition over into showing a, there is a difference between what you can see uh, in a channel and the functionality and features of the channel versus what's happening in a chat. And we get this question a lot why would you use a channel versus why would you use a chat or a group channel? Or I'm sorry, a group chat. So Marissa, would you like to kind of highlight some of those differences and why we might use yeah. this instead? So before I show you the chat, I'll remind you that what we did here was we created the central landing page of everything that we're working on. Uh, everyone, on the team has access to this. If I leave the company, my membership to the team and to the channel, my membership changes, but it doesn't change anything for anyone else. It doesn't change the files that they have access to. It doesn't change the meetings that have been recorded. Whereas if I have a chat with someone that is, or a group of people, it is a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on group ordeal and you start to tie things directly to your user account. It's kind of the, I like to use the uh, OneDrive SharePoint uh, example. OneDrive is designed to be your individual files, uh, your private share. What happens there is tied to your user. You have to share things with people. So that means if you are not there to control those permissions, Nobody else has access to that. So true teamwork should really reside in a channel. That doesn't mean that we can't have private conversations. Uh, when you move over to a channel, or excuse me, when you move over to the chat, you're gonna get pared down functionality because this is meant to be in real time, informal communication. When we have like, so for example, these files that we share with one another, there is no way for us to create files. This is, or excuse me, folders. This is just what we had said. Whatever files get shared just dumps in here. So you can start to see why this would not be beneficial to a team trying to find documents. The search functionality will help here, but it's not robust enough to replace an organized file structure. Um, you can share these. Uh, by getting the link. Um, this is utilizing OneDrive. So that's that difference. This is just OneDrive sharing at the user level versus SharePoint giving you a folder structure based on how teams work. The other thing you'll notice here is that this is actually called chat, not posts. Uh, posts indicate that it's kind of giving you information from other places. Um, the chat is just that, it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can add tabs here just the same. 
Uh, up here, you'll see the option to video call or audio call or to share your screen. We did not have that in the other one. The other one was a meet now functionality. Um, and let's see, when you do like a group, uh, a group together, let's see, where's my, when we did a chat uh, meeting, let's say John and I did this one-on-one -on -one what up, or one-on-one -on -one meetup, we weren't able to um, keep this associated with our chat. It created its own chat and it creates all of the meetings and everything in one place. It will not build on each other. It'll be here so that we can talk now about it and we can reference it, but it's in these fragmented conversations. It's not in that nice one place You'll see the meeting notes here. There is no option to find the other meeting notes uh, because there is no recurring meeting option. There's no follow the meeting, follow the chat through. This is a point in time, a collection of notes. And these notes are not something you can export because it is using that Microsoft Wiki functionality. So keep that in mind uh, when you're taking notes that the idea is to keep them with the meeting and the recording in Teams. They're not designed to be uh, sent out externally. Mm -hmm. And you can access chat right here uh, in the left navigation pane. Um, it gives you, you know, really, you can actually go down to contacts if you wanna just start communicating instead of looking at actual conversations, if you wanna just find people to chat with. Uh, but it's the same structure. You have the, the list of people in the, uh, where you had the list of teams, and then you have your main window to do your chat, your calls, and all of your uh, communication. Uh, the left navigation, you have your teams, um, so you can go back to that. Your calendar is going to give you an overview of what's going on. Um, you can join meetings from here. You can schedule meetings. Um, if I create a new meeting, just like we did uh, in the channel, You'll see here it's blank. I can add the channel and the attendees. Um, and then your files, all of your files that have been stored throughout uh, Teams as a repository here, including any other cloud storage you wanna add. Uh, and then you can also just add more apps. So you can add the Microsoft 365 apps, or you can add like the Tiny Pulse app or Monday.com as you see here. This is our, let me know what's going on. What's my week look like? Uh, so you have a lot of options when it comes to adding apps and that functionality in the way that you need it. And to, um, to clarify and like add on that, the ones that you're seeing on the left side pane are Marissa's personal apps. So yes. everybody personally starts with activity, chat, teams, um, calendar, and files, but she has added monday.com and that is for her personal work because it's on her left side panel. She can, and as you've seen, add monday.com into, or any other app, right, into a channel, and that's going to be the group's version, um, or into a chat as well. Um, and then that's her person, uh, that's for everybody on the team, right? Um, or she has access to, so she goes into planner now, she could see planner boards from across a bunch of different teams, like different teams that she's a part of, different, and this is something we really wanted to get into today, um, but unfortunately it's not quite ready yet, and that at Microsoft's level, uh, and that's this idea of to-dos and tasks. Um, this is a new feature, as Marissa mentioned, that's coming soon. Hopefully, we'll be out to everyone soon. I think they're rolling it out in different stages, but um, it should be really cool once it's ready. We'll see. Um, we are at about at the end of time. So if anybody has any last minute questions, please feel free to send them in because we have a couple of minutes left, but um, Marissa, Unless you have any last things to add while we're waiting for questions to come in, would you mind bouncing back over to the slide deck so we can talk about upcoming events? Well, I would love to. Thanks. So um, 
We are about at the end of the Back to the Future series. We have three events left in the series. It's very sad, but it's also all good things come to an end and we are working on some really good new stuff that's gonna come after the series. So um, while Marissa is getting that changed around a little, um, we can talk about that. There we go, ta-da, perfect. <laughs> so next week we're shifting away from teams. We're saying goodbye to our two-part team series and we're moving into a little bit of a cybersecurity um, two-part mini series as well. Um, next week we're gonna be talking about uh, the cybersecurity fundamentals, but through the lens of everything that's happening now and tomorrow right? Cybersecurity, the fundamentals are the same all the time, but what's happening in the world and hackers approaches change every day, right? So we always need to be coming back to those fundamentals and thinking about what they mean for here and now and tomorrow. So that's what we're going to be, do, uh, be doing next week. Um, so join us for that. And then the following week, um, we're going to do another end user friendly training and everyday people friendly training um, on cybersecurity. Uh, because we talk to the administrators all the time at our clients, right? We're always talking about things. And then we say, hey, go tell your people how to spot a phishing email. And we actually want to train and highlight and uh, showcase how to spot a phishing email for you to your people. So send us all of your folks. We're going to go over some really cool stuff. We're going to demonstrate um, how to in your inbox, know the difference between a real email and a phishing email. Um, and then some other kind of cool, like everyday, um, uh, everyday tips and tricks for cybersecurity. So how to create the right, uh, the right passwords that are safe and then how to store them safely. And that doesn't mean putting it on a sticky note. Um, there are really good ways to make that more efficient and safe. So we want to talk to your people, so send them to fish proof in two weeks. And then that's a wrap. We have one more session after that, and it's going to be a session with Clay Harris, who is our COO and president. He's going to hop on uh, with Marissa and I and talk about his perspective um, on the state of business and the modern workplace and all of these things and what that means going forward from his point of view as a small business leader. And also um, talk about some of the stuff we survey a lot of our um, a lot of our clients, uh, their um, C-level people and administrators are on their thoughts and what's happening. Um, so we're trying to keep a pulse on what's happening in the business world. And we're going to um, share some of that information with everyone and talk about some of his other stuff that happens um, in his entrepreneurial networking groups. So should be a really interesting session. So um, if you are interested in any of those, and we hope you are, you can join us <laughs> at any time on the info.worksmart.com uh, backslash event center website, um, which you're all probably pretty familiar with at this point. Um, but in case you didn't have a pen in hand, we will be sending you that information tomorrow via email with the recording so you can sign up straight from your inbox too. And then if you can't make it live, but you still want the content, you can always register for the event and you're going to get the recording afterward, or you can email me and I can help you get it. So that's it. I don't have any new questions in the queue, so we will end today's session. I hope you all had a wonderful rest of your day. I hope this was helpful for all of you. And like always, if you have questions about Teams or anything else to that effect, you can reach out to either myself or Marissa and we're always happy to help. So have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us.